Some years ago, I was thinking, I cannot leave this world without trying to do something for the environment. I will try, try to tell you why and how. I grew up at the west coast of Norway by a river, by the sea, surrounded by spectacular mountains. In the wintertime, I was skiing in the mountains. In the summertime, fishing salmon in the river. The sky was so blue, the snow was shiny white, and the water was crystal clear. We learned to handle a rowing boat, feeling how heavy it was rowing against the weather, and hoisting a sail going back home with the wind. It was so easy. I can still recall that feeling of the thrill of mastering the challenges. In this way, I also learned to love the nature for the sake of the nature. I grew up and I started wondering what are beyond those mountains? How does it look there, out in the big world? So I went to see on board what I thought was a huge ship with a huge engine, special designed to run on heavy fuel oil containing sulfur. Being the youngest of the crew in the engine room, I got all the dirty jobs like cleaning up the spill from the heavy fuel oil, sometimes crawling inside, even inside the engine when idle, in temperatures up to 60 degrees. I can still recall that feeling of the heat, the sticky oil, and the smell of sulfur. The spill was collected and thrown overboard or pumped overboard. I survived crawling in that spill, but the seabird trying to swim, it, swim in it would have died. So how could we do it? I believe we thought the ocean was so huge, it could take anything. It will just disappear, not affecting the environment. After all, it took three weeks to cross the Pacific. Nothing but the sea. Sometimes it could get a bit lonely, standing on the bridge in the night, looking out on the stars, going all the way down to the horizon. And you couldn't tell the difference between a star and a ship. Arriving the big cities, in the east, I was shocked by the heavy pollution, especially from the big ironworks. People there were using masks to protect themselves from the pollution. In the streets were automats where you could buy a deep breath of fresh air. After one year, I went back home. And I sort of forgot all about it. Getting an education, raising a family. And in the spare time, I was working on designing speed sailing boats. I was thrilled by the speed that you could achieve when the design was right. Like this French. French boat sailing in 52 knots in 25 knots through wind. But after a while, that feeling came back to me. And the concern for the, for the environment grew bigger than the greed for speed. So I started thinking, 
How? What can I do? How can I design a merchant vessel with my knowledge, not using heavy fuel oil? Then Winship was born. Inspired by the aviation and the sailing environment, the unique with this design is the shape of the hull, both above water and underwater. It can meet tomorrow's demands for fuel economy and uh, emission control. Estimated <clears throat> reduction in uh, fuel consumption is about 60%, in emission about 80%. It can have different applications, like uh, roll-on, roll-off, pure car and truck carriers, <clears throat> passengers, container vessels, and gas carriers. This application is a car carrier, and it can carry 6,500 cars, which is more than the reference model. A hybrid means that um, a vehicle is powered by two or more sources moving it. This picture from China showing a farmer who has put the sail on his horse carriage. So in this way, he can boost up the power of his horse. <laughs> well, it's two principal ways of sailing. It's sailing with the wind or into the wind. Sailing with the wind is ideal for slow steaming, while windship is going into the wind. A hull shaped like an airfoil will generate a lift, pulling the, speed, the ship in the speed direction. This is the, the, the ship's wind power system. This is showing the uh, gas-powered propulsion system also showing how little space it takes inside the ship. It can, it can take, start the ship from zero up to <clears throat> the desired speed. And in this way, keep a constant speed on the ship, even though the wind will vary. This is called the ship's cruise control. The weather forecast can tell you the wind speed and wind direction. An algorithm can give you the best angle for the maximum effect of the design. And a computer program can calculate the best route across the, mountain, <laughs> sorry, across the ocean to meet the estimated time of arrival, for instance. On this trip from Japan to Chile, Winship would have saved 680 tons of fuel compared to a reference ship which equals about 67%. Just think if you car, we're saving 60% of the fuel. To sum it up, the wind ship concept contains of three things. It's its wind power system, which, uh, like I said, has an ability to create a, a pull from the lift generated by the hull. It's uh, the ship's cruise control, keeping a constant speed on the ship, even though the apparent wind will vary over time. And it's the ship's weather routing module, which can calculate the best route across the ocean to meet the estimated time of arrival. This means you just tell where you want to go, when you want to be there, push the button, and off you go. Arriving the harbor, next harbor, you have saved 60% of the fuel. It's so easy, you don't even have to think about it. Saving fuel means saving of emission. So you will save CO2, you will save NOx, SOx, you will reduce the black carbon having a great impact of melting the ice in the Arctic. 
and you will save particles having an impact on your health. So how big is these figures? Savings from 23 days of steaming. Well, comparing to if you should have produced the same amount of CO2 with your car, with an average mileage per year, you would have had to driven for 1,200 years. Probably you would have lost your driving license long before that. <laughs> Stakeholders globally are realizing that new eco-friendly solution has to be introduced. Organizations like Marpool are coming up with new regulation of how much a ship can pollute. They are introducing uh, so-called emission control areas to reduce the SOX to save the environment. So regulation is one way of making it true. But money talks loud. With Windship, you could both save money and save the environment. Norway's first female prime minister put it this way. Think globally, act locally. My contribution is Windship. Everybody can do something for the environment. Together, we can mean a difference. Thank you for your attention.